Knee pain is a common complaint when sporty children are going through a growth spurt. Pain felt just below the kneecap is often associated with a condition called sinding larsen johansson syndrome, named after the doctors who first described it. It's an old term used to describe pain and inflammation just below the knee where the thigh muscles known as the quadriceps attach via a tendon to a growth plate on the bottom of the kneecap called the apophysis or APOP for short. The medical term for the kneecap is the patella, and itis just means inflammation, so maybe it should really just be called patella apophysitis. Growth spurts start in the foot and ankle before moving upwards through the leg and trunk. This is why kids look like they've got huge feet relative to the size of their body. Bone growth puts more strain on the thigh muscles and may cause more traction at the point where the muscles attach to the bone. This is close to the growth plate and tends to cause both traction, compression and shearing forces acting on that growth plate, causing inflammation and irritation. Because of this, we don't always recommend stretching the quadriceps. However, many children get tight hamstrings during growth spurts too, and this may mean that the muscle at the front of the thigh has to work harder to straighten your knee during kicking or running. Whilst we don't suggest you do the stretches for the front of the thigh, hamstring stretches therefore might ease that tension on the quadriceps and can help some children. Most non-contact injuries such as this are caused by a spike in activity relative to what they've trained for. They exceed their current capacity. That might be because they did too much too soon. Or they may have had a drop in capacity due to a virus, a growth spurt or lack of adequate sleep or nutrition. To learn more about this, watch the Kids Back to Sport video on why children get injured. It usually occurs around the age of 10 to 14. It's not just caused by doing too much sport, but usually occurs when something in their normal routine changes, such as at the start of a new season, a school term or when the seasons overlap. More commonly, it affects children who go through a faster growth spurt as muscles struggle to keep pace with growing bones. Some other similar conditions have been linked to lower levels of vitamin D, so it might be worth asking your doctor to check the child's levels. The child will present with a gradual onset of localised knee pain, where the quadriceps tendon inserts into the bottom of the kneecap. It'd be tender to press or kneel on, and sometimes it can become quite swollen. It'll be worse on activity and it'll settle with rest, but it's rarely severe or likely to cause the child to not be able to walk. So if that's the case, it may be something else and needs assessing by a health professional. A trained health professional will know what signs and symptoms to look for and to be able to diagnose the condition without x-rays or scans. They'll ask lots of questions about the symptoms you get and how the pain behaves. They'll be able to do a series of movements to isolate what structures are contributing to their symptoms and give them advice and exercises about how to manage their symptoms. Trying to get kids to do less is never popular. So try to find ways to increase the capacity of the body so they can tolerate more activity, building stronger muscles, getting more sleep and improving their energy intake and factoring in days when their body can adapt and recover all help. Learn more about how to boost the capacity of a child at kidsbacktosport.com. The aim of treatment is to keep them as active as possible. If they do nothing, their tissues get even less tolerant of loading and the muscles will get weaker. However, it's important they don't cause more injury. Ask them these questions. How much pain are they in? Score it from 0 to 10, where we're looking at the least pain being 0 and severe pain being 10. Many children struggle with this concept, so maybe introducing mild, moderate or severe can be helpful. Importantly, does it settle within an hour of stopping activity? Does it make them limp or have to play differently? And is it worse the next day or does it swell? If it settles within an hour, it doesn't cause them to limp, there's no increase in swelling and it's no worse the next day, then we can often find that they can continue to play with that mild amount of pain. However, if their pain is greater than a 2 out of 10, they may need help to get it to settle. Sometimes applying ice packs can ease the pain. But it's really important that we don't give them painkillers, which could mask their pain and mean that they do more than their body is ready for. Sometimes wearing a small knee brace can help, or they could be taught to apply tape. 
And the objective here is to try and help them to stay active as much as we can. One of the important parts is if the child is doing less and their knee hurts, their muscles will get weaker. It's important to start a graduated strength program for the calf, the hip, the thigh and the trunk muscles. And it's critical to get the right exercises for each child and to know how to do them correctly so they're felt in the right places and achieve the right effect. So it's best to get them assessed by a clinician with experience in knee problems, but in particular, those who are used to seeing adolescents. If the pain is persisting with still playing sport, they may need to take two to four weeks off from all high impact activities such as jumping and running to allow the symptoms to settle. After the pain settle, it's important not to go straight back to doing the same high levels of sport they were doing when they got injured. Build back up gradually so their body can adapt to what is being demanded of it and get itself strong pain is aggravated often by a spike in activity to relative to what they've trained for, such as at the beginning of a new school year or a new sports season, when their step count or activity level suddenly spikes. They may exceed their current capacity. It might be that they did too much too soon or their capacity might be lower due to a virus, a growth spurt or a lack of adequate sleep or nutrition. To learn more about this, Watch the kids back to sport video on why children get injured. To help them get back to sport, try using the kids back to sport tool. Find a level of activity on the steps that they can do with minimal pain and settles quickly without causing more symptoms the next day. For example, they might be able to go on their bike, but not run. Initially, leave a day between exercise sessions to assess if there's been any adverse reaction and then repeat that same exercise twice before moving on. If there has been no increase in symptoms, move up the steps one level and repeat the process. It may take several weeks or longer to achieve their previous level of activity, but doing it gradually allows the immature bone time to become stronger and tolerate more load. Once they can run, they're not yet ready to go straight back to sport. Start to add changes of direction, stopping and starting drills, and building up the number of sprints they do to replicate the demands of the sports they play. In those early matches, limit the game time and allow a day between matches so their body can adapt to the new stresses being applied. These types of conditions can last many months if not treated appropriately. So if after trying to reduce their symptoms down, your child is still in pain, it's often helpful to see a health professional who has experience in treating young athletes. Not all practitioners have the knowledge or expertise to treat children, so check those listed on the Kids Back to Sport register or ask your local therapist whether they regularly treat children.